Hey Facebook, I, uh, I think we're live right now from my home studio for Black Orchid. Um, I've also got some YT tiers on today as well, so um, hopefully all of their microphones are on mute uh, when they come on board. But we are going to be uh, practicing a little backbending today, which is a little out of my comfort zone as far as teaching without being with you. So if you guys, um, while you're preparing for class today, if you want to go ahead and grab yourself a towel and just fold it up, and then we're going to actually roll it just like this, and we're going to just have it nearby, um, that's going to be great, and that's where we're going to get started. We're going to start just a couple minutes after 9, okay? So be sure to grab that towel, or you can use a blanket, okay? We're just waiting for a few more people to come online. So while we're getting started, I'll, I'll just tell you I am out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, I, when I teach, I am rarely on the mat uh, like Callie, and so uh, she really inspired me yesterday to go ahead and rather than using another yoga body, I'm using my own body today. So we're gonna have a gentle practice. Um, I mean, it's still going to be challenging, I hope, for, for most of you, but this practice today is um, definitely challenging for me. After breaking my back about 11 years ago, my spine mobility is not what it used to be. And so we're going to be working in the thoracic spine quite a bit, so I want you to really pay attention to that space in the trunk of your body, the upper trunk of your body. So rather than um, that lumbar, which is automatically probably going to move all on its own, and then the neck. So making sure that the, the chin and things are going to guide us, but more importantly, we're going to be lifting up through the chest today. So in these back bends, rather than thinking about going back, and I might say the word back sometimes, we're going to think about lifting and reaching here first. So uh, we'll get started. If you want to get started on your backs, we're going to go ahead and use that towel right away. We're going to place it right around the shoulder blades, just below the shoulder blades, maybe slightly above, depending on how big your towel is. I hope everybody can hear me. And just so you know, once I lay down, I can't see the screen. So I hope everything is still going well. So just get on that towel, and you're going to just roll on back. And we want it to be just slightly kind of in that weird discomfort place. Um, the knees can be bent if that's more um, supported for you, but I encourage you to let those legs go long because then that lumbar curve just automatically occurs. The arms are going to go up and overhead, so the back of the head is resting on the floor, and you feel this deep pressure across the back side of the heart, just below the back side of the heart. So we're just going to take a few really deep breaths here, and just completely fill the lungs, pause and then completely empty the lungs. Inhale fully, pause, exhale deeply. We'll just let you go ahead and take a few rounds on your own, each time feeling the shoulders fall back behind you just a little bit more, and each time feeling the chest lift and hold in that position as you push your sit bones down into the mat, lengthening through the heels towards the end of your mat. If your knees are bent like this, rather than pushing the feet away from you, see if you can gather the heels, lift the toes, and let this be a little bit more active and pull the toes towards you. That's, again, going to accentuate that lumbar curve that we already have and then bring it up and drop up into the upper back. Taking a few more breaths, palms face up and overhead. Notice you're shrugging or squeezing the shoulders into the ears. We're going to relax them long and pull them towards the tailbone. So being really active here, just a few more breaths. Remember, those legs can be long as well. And so today's practice is really about becoming unstuck. I think that... Uh, we get stuck in our middle back. It's where the anahata chakra is, where our heart resides. And the true translation of that is becoming unstuck, that which is unstuck. So we want to really start to feel that opening, that flooding open. And I feel like a lot of us feel that we're stuck right now, being stuck inside or stuck at home without our regular day-to-day. -day. I know our students at the studio 
are really um, hankering to get into the studio wanting hot classes, you can always crank the heat, turn on a space heater next to you if you want. We're gonna take a few more breaths here. So while you're still reclined, I'm gonna go ahead and sit up for a moment. I just wanted to read something that I came across last night um, in teacher training. We are um, going through the sutras, and I think Callie brought that up yesterday. She started with the very first sutra. Um, now is the time to begin the study of yoga. And I was reading um, Jessica Char's book last night, just as I kind of settled into my own practice. And one of the things that he said, Krishnamacharya once said, was thank God for dukkha, which is suffering. Dukkha is the suffering that we all encounter throughout each and every day, um, because it's the unavoidable motive for practice. And so I want us to move through that dukkha together today. We'll suffer along together. Um, in this quarantine. I don't know about where you are, but we've got snow falling here in Montana. And so being inside for a cozy practice sounds pretty good. We're going to take one more big breath in that reclined position with that towel behind you. And then when you're ready, just gently roll on to your right or left side and remove that towel from underneath you. Um, you may need it a little later, but right now it can just sit off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and recline back down again nice and long and reach the arms up and overhead again and as you exhale go ahead and start to slowly bend like a banana walking the feet over to the right side of the body cross the left ankle over the right walking the arms over and grabbing hold of that left wrist and just feeling that side body really open up make sure both shoulder blades stay on the floor and lengthen through the spine so we feel that gentle curve of the spine that already exists here both sit bones are still pressing down and back, even though that left leg is slightly elevated off the floor with that ankle cross. One more breath, inhale, exhale. And then inhale it back through center. Go ahead and exhale, walk the feet to the other side, grab hold of your right wrist, bend like a banana now in the opposite direction, flex the feet, gather them into the midline so the inner thighs stay fully engaged and aware. Getting those ribs open and unstuck, unfurl the body a little bit, relax that right shoulder back and down. Take a couple of deep breaths here. Good. You hear any weird noises off in the background? I've got a pug and an old Aussie that are sitting and watching our practice today. I tried to fence them off. Take a couple, a couple more deep breaths. Inhale through the nose, out through the nose. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Walk it back to center on your in-breath. Good. So from here, bend the knees. Go ahead and flex the feet into the floor. And then we're going to make little robot arms as the elbows come into the rib cage. We're going to lift the hips just slightly enough to press the low back into the floor for a moment. And I want you to just feel that pelvic tilt as you lift the low back away from the floor and then also press it back down just a couple of times, just feeling a little bit of mobility that comes in. The um, backs of the arms are anchored and you feel the shoulder blades gather together so it makes it a little harder for the whole spine to rest on the mat. And then the feet again, are rather than kicking away from you, are gathered in and pulling, hugging into the sit bones here. Fingers are engaged. There's a little space between the chin and the throat as you press the head back. From here, lift all 10 toes, rooting down to the big toe now, feeling the arch lift of the foot, and then slowly peel the body up and away from the floor, coming into a nice low bridge pose. As you exhale, we're gonna peel upper back, middle back, lower back, all the way back down, just by the time it touches. Inhale, begin to lift and rise again. Good, so again, imagine that pubic bone pulling towards the upper body rather than away from you. That's going to gather the heels and draw them in the same direction as well. Good. One more time. I like to do things in threes or sets of 108, and we just don't ever have that kind of time. So take another breath here. Exhale, lower down. Good. From here, go ahead and take the knees wide, grab hold of the big toes, and just create a little happy baby, rolling it from side to side. Loosen up those hips a little bit. We're going to get into them just slightly today, but enough so that we can gain a little bit of flexibility. Back and forth. Good. From here, as you come into a static hold, draw the elbows and the shins 
towards one another and then pull the thighs down to the floor. You're gonna feel the tailbone grow nice and long towards the end of your mat. The back is really firmly rooted into the floor. And then as you exhale, knees come together. Go ahead and inhale, roll up into a boat pose. Good, knees can be bent here if you'd like. Lifting up through the chest and imagine you're inviting a back bend already. From here, we're gonna go ahead and slowly cross the ankles, right ankle in front of the left. I'm gonna go ahead and turn and face you. Right angle in front of the left, we're gonna sit up nice and tall. As you inhale, reach up to the sky. Exhale, right hand to left knee, other hand acts as a kickstand behind you. Lift up through the chest. As you exhale, feel that twist go a little deeper. And it doesn't have to be super deep right now, just because we're still warming up the body, depending on the temperature of the room that you're practicing in. Good. From here, inhale, come back through center. Exhale, go ahead and take a little twist, about half his length, half the length on this side. Just one breath. And then inhale back to center, nice and high. As you exhale, we're going to take the hands in front of us. And I want you to place the palms on the floor. Now, if this feels like work already, if you feel it in the hip here, you're going to stay right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our hands, we're going to energetically slide them towards our shins here to engage that back bending sensation. So you've got a little bit more flexibility and want to come down to the forearms, you can. And we're going to pull the elbows towards the shins, either way, hands um, I'm sorry, elbows up or down, your choice. And feel that little arc, that little curve in the upper back here. You're going to also feel this in that hip of that foot that's in front, that um, right leg. Take a couple of deep breaths. Notice if the curve of the neck is just a continuation of that thoracic spine um, or if it's um, just that cervical spine that's moving. And if it's just that cervical spine, bring the eyes down slightly towards the hands. Good, Put, root back into those sit bones, push back length in the spine, one more breath. And then on that next inhale, reach all the way back up. Exhale, go ahead and lower down with the hands. We're gonna switch which, hand, which leg is in front here now. Just going ahead and evening things out. Make sure both sit bones are still on the floor. Inhale, reach up nice and high. This time we're going to twist towards the right first, the left hand across to the right knee. Lift and lengthen. Use that as a nice little push point here to engage the twist. Let the eyes follow all the way back behind you as far as they can go. Imagine the eyes are just a continuation of the spine. Our body tends to go where we look. One more big breath. Good, and then from here, staying collected in both sit bones, reach up to the sky, and then take a twist to the other side about half as long, just one breath this time. On the in-breath, bring it back through center, and as you exhale, place those hands or the forearms down, lengthening as you go. So if you watch my spine, you want to make sure that this collapsing doesn't happen. So as you press into the hands, you're pulling, dragging the hands energetically towards you. It's going to bring the pubic bone slightly forward and curve it um, so it tilts back. And then we're able to roll on the sit bones in the proper way, really getting a nice stretch through that hip on the left. Squeeze the shoulder blades back and down. Lift up through the heart. Just a couple more breaths here. So check in with how stagnant or sticky you're feeling, maybe a little disconnected from your daily life. The beauty of this quarantine is that we are still very connected online, maybe not in person, but I've noticed a huge, huge just kind of gathering of people, which has been amazing. I feel like I'm more in touch with, with some people um, than I was when I was out and about. So it's a really wonderful thing. So take some time to just kind of feel unfettered here for a moment. Begin to feel that lightning in the heart. Good. And then slowly go ahead and walk yourself back. Inhale, arms up and overhead again. As you exhale, go ahead and plant those hands. Roll all the way forward. And we're going to come into our first downward facing dog of our practice today. So you can go ahead and press on back. We're going to keep the knees bent here. And you can even take the legs wide to the outer edges of the mat if you're feeling really tight. Press the heart back towards the thighs. Lift up through, widen sit bones. Really lengthen that tailbone to the sky. And just shift your weight side to side here. Get nice and sultry with it for a moment. 
If you're not feeling quite as tight, those feet can come within hip distance or even big toes touching your choice. And notice how easy it is to just fall into those shoulder heads here. So go ahead and press the heart back, but engage the fingertips to create that length and lift through the spine. Tailbone sticks up nice and high. And don't be worried about those heels reaching to the floor. They'll come down eventually, but maybe not touch. That's okay. One thing that I had a teacher tell me was creating that lift through bent knees, creating that buoyancy from the earth here, and then feeling the heels lengthen from the backs of the knees. So it doesn't matter how bent your knees are, the heels can still continue to wander their way down. From here, go ahead and inhale, round forward to a high plank position, nice and slow, taking your time. And then bring the eyes beyond your mat, inviting in that same almost back bending sensation as you squeeze length through the outer edges of the arms. From here, you can drop your knees if you'd like, or you can keep them lifted. Exhale, lower all the way down into the mat. Uncurl your toes. And then from here, we're going to walk our hands off the mat and bring it into tented fingertips here. So elbows are over the wrist. Push that forehead into the floor. And just settle in for a couple of deep breaths with everything pressing into the mat. Lock all 10 toenails down to the floor so the tops of the feet are very, very flat and heavy. On your next breath, begin to pull the heart forward as you press into the fingertips. Elbows still stay wide, creating space between the shoulder blades. Go ahead and slowly rise into a nice little hooded cobra. As you exhale, lower down. One vertebrae at a time. Inhale, peel it up one vertebrae at a time. This time, bending through the right knee as you rise. Exhale, lower down. One more time with that left knee bending. This time, bending through that knee, lifting up through the heart. And then exhale, lower. Pause here and just give yourself a moment to see how you feel. Bring the hands underneath you in that push-up position. Curl the toes under. We're going to take a moment here just, just to kind of feel our way in. Walk those toes as far forward as you can as if you were trying to scratch the roof of your mouth here. And then feel how those quads engage immediately so that core engages right away. You can always keep the knees down. From here, we're going to get that pubic bone nice and heavy. Push it down into the floor. That's going to lengthen the low back here. And when we get that nice and heavy and the quads are nice and firm, the belly button can pull in. And then as you inhale, everything rises up and away from the floor into a plank. And then we push it back with bent knees to downward facing dog. Good. So pedal out those feet again. See if anything's changed, anything's shifted. Good. From here, big toes come together to touch. That right leg is going to reach back behind you nice and long. And as you exhale, go ahead and lightly tent the right fingers and step between the hands. Can we up onto the fingertips? Now, if you have blocks at home, I encourage you to come up a little higher here and really create that cobra sensation in the chest. But right now, you can just work into the fingertips. If this feels too hard to reach the floor here, go ahead and drop that knee and lengthen through that, that back leg. Just get that thigh nice and long. So you've got those two options here. Take a couple of deep breaths. You can take that thumb on the right hand, go ahead and put it in that right hip crease, pull that hip crease back as if that hip were trying to tap the big toe on your left foot. And that's gonna then create a little bit more length for that spine to level out and reach the crown of the head forward. So we're a nice long line from the top of the head all the way down to that back heel. From here, inhale, airplane the arms back, create that space. Exhale, lower that knee down. Inhale, arms come up and overhead. We're going to clasp the hands back behind the head here. And we're going to bring the elbows forward. So for me, and this doesn't have to be a deep lunge. If you're more comfortable bringing that knee in, you're more than welcome to do that. But from here, and also you can use your towel and put it under the knee if this is too difficult for that knee, if it hurts. So with those hands behind the head, elbows forward. Go ahead and start to pull the heartstrings up towards that seam in the ceiling between uh, the wall and the ceiling here. The elbows stay pulled together. You're going to engage the underarm all along here and help support the spine as it rises. And then reach the heart open. Once you find that place where you start to get a little sticky, and instead of leaning back, remember we're really reaching forward and up. Now the elbows widen, and we've got a little bit more movement in that thoracic spine again. We're going to just go ahead and rock side to side, dropping one elbow towards the floor and then the other, just taking your time. Notice how that knee becomes a little unstable when we do that. So when you do that, make sure you're pushing into that big toe mound and keeping everything tracking forward. 
Good. I'm assuming you're doing good, right? Inhale, arms reach up nice and high. As you exhale, place the hands onto the floor. We're going to take that back foot, step it up slightly. Heel is still lifted, okay? And then from here, bending through that back knee. Inhale, straighten the back knee-ish. Straighten-ish the front leg. Go ahead and exhale, or inhale, lower that knee a little bit. Exhale, hinge. Press the hip crease back on the right side. Good. And exhale. One more time. Feel that length of the hamstring on that front leg. Pull the hip crease back. Beautiful job. From here, step it all the way back into your lunge. Lift through the heart. And exhale, take it into downward facing dog. Lower the knees to the earth this time, keeping the hips over the knees. Walk the hands further forward. Again, this towel can come in handy to place underneath the forehead or the chin. Lower the heart. Anahatasana, heart melting pose. Take a couple of deep breaths here. We're going to take five breaths here as I grab a drink of water. Good, just a couple more breaths. You can always bring those hips slightly in front of those knees if that feels more comfortable for you. This is that place we feel stuck sometimes, so let it open. And then pushing through the baby toes, go ahead and slowly roll through the shoulder sockets all the way forward into that low plank. You can lower the hips to the floor now. And then uncurl the toes if you choose, you don't have to. And then place the hand, the weight into the forearms, the hands, the elbow, and pull the heart forward. Again, we're getting that same sensation of the hands pulling back to the body to engage the chest forward and reach to the sky. Rather than just pushing into the hands and leaning back, we're reaching and pulling. Good. As you exhale, slide the hands back to that push-up position. Curl the toes under. Coming back to that nice, strong plank position. Keep the bone down. Belly in, come into a teeny tiny back bend by pulling the elbows back to the hip bones, and then slowly inhale, rise to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Remember, you can always use those knees on the way back. See how this feels now? Is anything different than before? One side's probably a little looser. Big toes together to touch. That left leg reaches up to the sky. And then slowly tend the left fingers, push through, and set that foot down. Good, so find that same runner's lunge that you had on the other side, pulling the heart forward. Remember, if you have on blocks, lifting you just a little bit to create a little bit more space for the collarbone. Rooting down at the big toe mount on that left foot so that your knee doesn't hang out to the side. And taking a couple of calm, soothing breaths. That left thumb can hook into the left hip crease and pull that hip back just a little bit. When we do that, sometimes that knee's going to open up and we can squeeze that knee back in again. And so we're just trying to get everything into that beautiful alignment. Good. Pull the heart forward, lengthen, press, breathe. From here, go ahead and slowly go ahead and take that back foot. We're going to go ahead, actually, we're going to drop that knee. Sorry, I'm a little behind here. We're going to take that back knee down. Inhale, slowly pull your way up. Again, you can come into that crescent variation, or you can come into more of like a tabletop position, um, like sawhorse position with that leg. But from here, inhale, arms come up nice and high. Elbows are gonna stay close to the ears and forward as we clasp the hands. You're gonna clasp them the opposite as before, okay? So it's gonna feel a little different. And then slowly pull the chest up towards that seam where the wall and the ceiling meet, reaching the heart forward. You might notice the hips start to drop forward a little bit. Make sure it's not at the expense of the low back. And then from here, we widen the elbows once we find that place where we get just kind of stuck, and it's going to help us move through that just a little bit more. Breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. My pug is snoring, if anybody can hear that. He's doing a lot of pranayama today. Good. Sink down one more breath. Lift through the heart. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Exhale, let those hands meet. We're going to step that foot up slightly as if we were trying to come into warrior one, but that heel stays off the floor. And then slowly as you exhale, begin to straighten-ish the front leg. You can bend or straighten the back leg. 
We're starting to pull the hip crease back, leveling the hips as you go. Good. Bringing it forward. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze it back. Good. Inhale. Pull forward. Create that space across the heart and back. Good. And again, we'll do one more for good measure. Squeeze, length into that hamstring, lift the toes, light everything up. Good. And then from here, we're actually going to come into a forward fold. So go ahead and step all the way forward. I'm going to go ahead and face you now. We're going to take our feet a little bit wider. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthen the spine. We're trying to flatten out the back. Reach the heart forward. And then turn the toes out. Exhale, sit down into malasana. Good. So if the heels don't want to stay on the floor, you've got your rolled up towel. You can place it underneath the heels. But from here, inhale, press into the hands, lift the heart. And create that same back bend sensation that you had before in that cobra, in that heart melting posture, even in that lunge. Feel free to close your eyes. If you find yourself fidgeting, it's okay. You can come in and out of the posture a couple times if you want to. In through the nose, nice and long. Hold that prana in and let it move out. Now, if you find yourself in that dukkha, in that suffering right now, ask yourself why that is. What's tight? What's holding me? What's holding me back? Good. See if you can press in the palms a little bit more, lengthen through the crown of the head. Send the tailbone down and back. Notice those hips start to broaden and open. Exhale, take a wide legged forward fold, toes face forward now. Grasp each elbow and just sway like an elephant's trunk right here. You can soften into the knees, gather buoyancy from the ground. Another deep breath in and out. And then from here, we're going to just bend through the knees, trickle up one vertebrae at a time, all the way to standing. As you exhale, the shoulders roll down and back, palms face forward. Close your eyes and just take a moment to get really rooted, grounded, and connected here with the legs wide. Pausing in the stillness of our practice reminds us to be fully present and aware, as Callie reminded us yesterday. When you're ready, open your eyes, step the feet together so that the big toes are touching. If that's not comfortable, hip distance is just fine. We're going to really lift all 10 toes up and away from the floor. Inhale, arms come up nice and high. Go ahead and clasp the hands over the elbows here now. And then we're going to take a couple of side bend stretches. So we're going to really squeeze as if we're trying to pull the elbows closer together. We're going to squeeze those hands into the elbows. Lift up through the chest again. That chest is reaching forward. But taking that back bend at the same time. So lifting up through the heart. <coughs> Excuse me. Good. Now go ahead and slowly make your way towards the right with that little gentle back bend here. And then back through center. Inhale. Exhale, start to make your way slightly to the left. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. And then keep pulling those elbows back behind the head. And they might not go. That's okay. And start to take the twist. So now that right shoulder pulls back a little bit more. There's a little bit more space from the hips and the ribs and that shoulder and collarbone here. Beautiful job. And from here, slowly come back to center. Exhale, let's take a forward fold to the top of the mat. Good. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, level the spine, lengthen, press forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step back into downward facing dog. Take a child's pose or drink of water if you'd like. <coughs> We're just going to settle in for just a few breaths here. So today's practice has a few more hatha yoga elements rather than a full vinyasa class, but we do have our connecting vinyasa, which is that heart melting pose today. So you're more than welcome to flow through that, moving through heart melting pose as you exhale, 
and then inhaling into that sphinx that we were in before. From there, you can move back into plank as you inhale again on the next breath, exhale to down dog. We'll all meet in that downward facing dog. One more big breath. We're gonna float just a little bit more, but staying pretty rooted and grounded towards the earth. From downward facing dog, big toes together to touch. Inhale, take that right leg back behind you nice and long. Bring it forward and through, step it lightly between the hands. Pause here. From this position, take that back foot, step it up. Now drop the heel this time. We're going to move through warrior one, straightening out that leg. Pause, take the hands to the hips, look down. Make sure that those feet are on railroad tracks rather than tracking one in front of the other. So we've got a nice broad stance here. You can always heel to that foot out a little bit. And from here, inhale, take the arms up high. As you exhale, slowly begin to bring your heart forward towards the top of the mat. As soon as you feel the tightening of that hamstring, pause. Notice the weight fall into the pinky toe side of the foot. Push down into that big toe now, because if we don't, that hip's going to start to sweep forward. The left hip's going to open up. We want to keep everything facing forward. Now the hands come back behind you. Elbows come forward. And then inhale, stretch up about three-quarters of the way to a standing position. Exhale, hinge and fold. Let the elbows open wide. So there's a lot of muscular strength in the back here. I'm not looking for you to come all the way down. It's about three quarters to half the way down. Breathe. Notice how the elbows get heavy. They want to fall forward. Keep them nice and wide. One more breath. Good. And then slowly release the hands to the mat. Step that back foot out just a little bit more. Weight now goes into the fingertips or the palm of the left hand. Slowly reach up and right, rise with the right arm. And then surf that hand around, bending into the left knee, skandhasana, sink low. Good. Take it to the other side. Stay low. Stay rooted. Gaze forward. And then crouch and crawl like a tire towards the back of your mat. We're in that lunge with that leg on the outside of the hands. Fingers are on the floor or palms. If you're coming to the palms, make sure you've got enough room for the collarbone to expand here. I'm going to come up onto my fingertips. So really opening through that hip, drop the back knee, lift up through the heart. Good. Squeeze the knee towards the shoulders. You gaze forward rather than down. Pushing into the palms or the fingertips again, pulling the chest forward rather than pushing the hands away from you. Good. Variation of lizard pose. One more breath. Squeeze knee to elbow or knee to shoulder, wherever you're at. And then slowly walk that foot across towards the other hand and lower that knee down to the floor. Taking that nice deep upright pigeon. Now if you have any low back issues like I do, just keep the back toes curled under here for support to keep this leg really fully engaged. Make sure everything's still facing forward. This foot can hug all the way into the pubic bone if you want to. Knees on the outside of the hip. Again, your towel can come in handy. You can wedge it right underneath that sit bone here, but we're going to stand on the fingertips, reach the heart forward. So the fingertips are pressing down and back towards the hips as the heart lifts. From here, this back foot rises away from the mat. You're not even going to reach back and grab it here. You're going to just lift and hold, making sure that that quad is opening, body is strong, low back is nice and open. Now it's real easy to just fall in and collapse the middle back that we've been working to open so much to our practice. So squeeze the shoulder blades down, lift up through the chest, let a little bit of space form between the chin and that throat. One more breath here. Inhale. And as you exhale, lower that foot back down. We're going to roll into the left sit bone here and go ahead and pull that foot across the body. Come into both sit bones now. Preparing for Pragrita Janak Shirshasan, one of my favorite postures is just to revolve head to knee. So you get nice and tall. Inhale, reach to the sky. Right hand is going to come across to the left knee. Pause right here. Look back, make sure the toes are still lifted. If you felt your sit bones come up and away from the floor and that hip elevated on that right side, push it down just a little bit more. Inhale, push into that leg and twist. Exhale, go a little deeper. Create length and then twist. Create the space to move. Much like our lives right now. Creating, I think everybody's been cleaning their houses, right? 
So we start to find all that clutter, we get to remove it. Now that we have to live in it a little bit more regularly, that's all we're doing here with the body, removing that clutter. From here, we want to go a little deeper in the posture. That kickstand hand can reach up, and the thumb can extend towards the big, the big toe on that right leg. And you can even hook the elbow to the inside. And we're taking that same position that we had earlier when we were standing. We're taking a nice little twist and working towards the back bend so the heart stays open. Press the palm back behind you. From here, next breath, inhale, come up, plant the hands at the back of your mat. Go ahead and pivot all the way around, down dog, three-legged down dog, press the left leg high. Exhale, set that foot down, big toes together to touch. That right leg is going to lift again, right leg high, inhale. As you exhale, step that right leg forward and through. Good. Pull the chest forward just like you did before. Now we're going to put the weight into the right hand on the outside of that leg. Taking that same motion, go ahead and slowly work the arm open and lean into a back bend here. From here, you're going to pivot all the way around into wide-legged straddle. Hey, guys. Right here. Pause. Inhale. Lift and lengthen. Bring the heart forward. And then as you exhale, place that left hand underneath you. Take a twist towards the right, right hand side. Good. Notice if you're falling into that right shoulder, pull the shoulder away from the collarbone. Hands can always come to the hip here. I know you guys got a good booty shot right now. Take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, let it guide you all the way around into that left leg lunge, top of the mat. Downward facing dog, hips nice and high, bend through the knees, find that buoyancy in the hands and the feet again. If you want that vinyasa, remember it's just knees down, heart melts, exhale. Inhale, pull through into that nice low sphinx pose. And then exhale, go ahead and slowly walk the hands back, curl the toes. Inhale to plank, exhale to down dog. Now you don't have to do that each time. You can decide whether or not you like that or not. Breathe right here. With the big toes together to touch, left leg reaches to the sky, and then slowly step it just between the hands. Pause right here. Good. Take the back foot. We're going to step it up, moving through that warrior one position again. On railroad tracks, reach up and straighten the leg as you go. Good. If you remember how you clasped the hands up and overhead before, we're going to actually bring the elbows, hand, bring the hands to the elbows again, and go ahead and start to surf the heart forward. Pausing when you feel the heart start to fall forward, and lifting up a little bit. You can always step that back foot in a little bit more. Good. Squeeze this hip crease back on that left side towards the right heel. Feeling all that strength develop along the spine to support it. See so if you can get that stretch, that hamstring. Breathe. Continue to follow your heart forward, having faith that you can breathe one more breath here. Good. And then as you exhale, release the hands, bend that front knee. Step that foot back into that runner's lunge again. Grow nice and long. Take that back bend through the upper spine. Weight now into the right fingertips. Take that twist nice and high. Bring it up. Lean it back through the plane of the body. As you exhale, surf it around all the way to Skandasana on that right side. Bending the right knee. Sink low. Going to the left. Sink low. Gaze over that right foot. And slowly stalk your way forward. Coming onto the fingertips or the palms here, pulling the hip crease back. Everything's open on the outside of that leg. Breathe. Back knee can go down here. Push into that big toe mount just behind the big toe. Root it down. Lift the arch as you activate the toes on that foot. And press in the palms. Again, if you are a little lower here, make sure that you're not pushing the hands away from you. Make sure that you're really reaching and extending forward. Today is not about how deep we can go. Well, it is and it isn't, right? It's 
not about touching your toes. It's about that little journey around the mat that we're taking together. So we can feel that connectedness, get unstuck together. Good, from this position, we're gonna slowly walk the hand to the outside of that foot, heel to that foot across, drop the knee on the outside of the hip, and then pull that heel in as much as we want to. Take a deep breath, toes stay curled under that back foot, lift up through the chest. Now, if you feel that jarring sensation because you're leaning back, start by pulling forward, get light, get buoyant in the fingers, feel the elbows bend and soften, feel the shoulders relax a little bit, and then find your way up into that beautiful posture when you're ready, elevate that foot. Hmm. So what we're doing is we're lengthening that quadricep here to create a little bit more space. We're also able to um, get that hip flexor nice and relaxed so that it can help aid in that postural back bend. And hopefully your spine will feel pretty good through the rest of the day. Settle in one or two more breaths here. Good. Now, when you're ready, we're going to lower that leg, roll onto that right sit bone. So my back's going to be to you, and then I'll turn around in just a moment. We're going to set everything up so that our booty is flat on the floor. I'll go ahead and face you now. Booty is flat on the floor, and that leg is nice and long and extended. As you inhale, come up high. You're going to take the left hand to the right knee. Go ahead and twist long. Inhale, create the space and the length. If you felt that hip come up, press it back down. Sit bone rooted into the floor. Good. Look back at the big toe. Make sure they're still looking at you. And if you wanted to take it to that next step, if you're feeling it, push into that knee. Slowly lift that kickstand hand up and away, and then press the palm back behind you. Rather than that arm coming in front of the head, bring that behind the ear and take your twist. Remember, you can also hook that elbow into that inner thigh and extend. Good. So rather than collapsing here, we want to create the distance and the space, spaciousness in our little homes. Good. You're going to breathe here. Just a couple more breaths. I'm going to turn back around so I'm in the same position that you guys are in. And when you're ready, inhale, swing the arms up. Exhale, plant the hands. Turn the toes on that left foot. And sweep that right leg high into that down dog split. Set it down. Exhale, big toes together. Left leg reaches to the sky. Bring it forward and through. Good. From this position now, Remember, we're going to take the weight into that left hand and then slowly arc the spine around and forward and across the body. Good. That hand can walk off the mat a little bit if you wanted to. Good. And then surf it around into a wide-legged straddle right here. Inhale, come up halfway, gaze forward, widen the sit bone. Exhale, root down into that right hand underneath the sternum. And as you press into that hand, take that beautiful twist, pulling the heart up and away, and then reach those left fingers high. Make sure the toes are facing forward, maybe slightly pigeon toed in. If you feel that shoulder dropping a little bit, push a little deeper into that hand. Again, if you have those blocks at home, it's a great time to use them. I say that as my blocks are sitting next to me on the floor. And when you're ready, exhale, go ahead and unbind that twist. Come all the way around into that right leg. And go ahead and step back in the down dog. You've got your choice of that flow. You can stay in down dog, or you can lower to the knees and take a child's pose right here. We're going to take five full breaths no matter where you've decided to go. And if you've decided, if you're in that resting posture of child's pose, feeling the earth, rooting that third eye center into the mat, notice that sensation of grounding. So even though we're all kind of in this quarantine together, there's this connectedness across the earth right now. 
We're all in it together. If you're in that child's pose, go ahead and curl the toe. And we're going to just find our way up to all fours. Bring the knees together. Keep the toes curled under here. We're going to take a few dynamic movements. So from this position, um, again, you can place your uh, blanket or your towel underneath your knee. From this position, we're going to find that buoyancy in the hands, push ourselves up, arms up and overhead, hips come forward, right hand is going to surf back into the low back, left thumb is going to guide the heart up. As the thumb comes back behind the shoulder, the hips move forward, the heart lifts. As you exhale, that left hand is going to come down, find buoyancy, push it back up. Press the hips forward, and then try it again. Pull the heart forward towards the top of the mat each time. Buoyancy and lift. Good. From here, exhale both hands down to the mat again. Pause for a moment in a neutral spine. If you want, you can shift the hips side to side. Try to avoid wanting to do that cat and cow position for a moment. All right, so from here, same thing. We're going to press off the hands, reach up nice and high. This time, left hand is going to go in the low back. Right thumb is going to guide my way as I lift through the chest, pressing the hips forward. From here, that right hand guides me back down, but my chest is still reaching, 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 lifelong spine, buoyancy in that hand, press up and away. Good. Create the space. Maintain the space. Good. And again, I can hear my dog barking to come in. He's telling me the class is over. Not quite yet. One more time for good measure. Let's see if we can take it down. Push it up and find that buoyancy. Good. Exhale both hands down to the earth. Pause in neutral spine. Try to avoid that Halloween cat for a moment. And just shift the hips side to side. Go ahead and find your blanket or towel if you want. We're going to come down to sit into Virasana or Hero's Pose. So if, you, um, if you're uncomfortable with the feet on the outside edges and sitting up nice and tall here, that rolled up towel is going to fit perfectly between the legs. And you can sit up on it again. The block has come in handy too. We're going to take the hands to the backs of the feet, or the tops of, these are the bottoms of the feet, sorry about that. Push into the heels, lift up through the chest. So if you're not comfortable or able to straighten out those arms here and feel that lift, that pull forward, go ahead and place them into the hip creases and push off from there. If this is hard on your knee. If, if it's more comfortable for you to turn the feet out a little and flex, you can do that as well. Or you can stay up on the knees and just work right here into a variation of camel. Good, so from here, peel the elbows back as if they were trying to touch the spine. Walk the hands off the feet and lift up through the chest. Notice that the wrists are now flexed, and walk the hands back as far as is comfortable with a nice straight arm, really flexing into the wrist. Lift the chest, open the shoulder, reach the heart high. Remember, rather than sinking back, see if you can reach up. Squeeze the inner thighs together, push the knees forward to the top of the mat, And then slowly walk your way back, hands to heels. Close your eyes and pause. Take a full round, deep inhale, belly breath. Soothe yourself out with the exhale. Good. If you just got two more back bends to go, go ahead and come on up onto the knees. Curl those toes under. Now, if you like that asymmetrical version that we just did, you can do one of two things. You can stay with what you just did. You can do a symmetrical variation, which I'm going to be showing you in just a moment. Or you can go ahead and take another asymmetrical version where we just take that right knee forward. I'll go ahead and do it for you. Inhaling up high, and then that hand on the left is going to come back to the left heel as you extend. Okay? You can do that on both sides here if you want to work asymmetrically. That's fine. If you want to work into that camel posture, reaching for the heels, that's where we're going to go next. Toe stay curled under for support and stability. 
If you know your flexibility is great, you can, you can always flatten the feet and reach the feet. What I want you to avoid is that leaning back sensation. So notice I've got like a Michael Jackson thriller move, a little booty move, those of you that practice shape with me. We're gonna actually keep the hips over, the hip bones over the knees here. So we wanna really create that traction drawing down through the back. From here, inhale, lift up through the chest. You can also do that with the arms up and open. And then wind, wind the arms down, reaching to the heels. Notice my hips shifted back slightly, but from here, I press the chest and the hips forward, and the chin comes away from the throat. Eyes stay up and overhead, the back of the neck stays long and engaged. Good. Breathe. Press the hips forward, open the heart. And when you're ready to come up, chin to chest, inhale, rise, pause, exhale. Go ahead and come back to all fours neutral spine. Move that blanket out of the way if it's still there. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and cross the ankles back behind us, coming into a nice Sukhasana or easy seat for a moment. Turn the palms face down just to kind of soothe the nervous system for a moment. Taking a deep breath, inhale through the nose, exhale deeply through the mouth. So from here, we're going to roll onto our backs. You can actually begin this class much like we started if you were Dunsville, since it's your Sunday, and you want to come back to that position that we started in with that rolled up towel just behind the shoulder blades and that thoracic spine, you can do that. You can also take a variation, any variation that you know and you're comfortable with, a bridge pose. But we're going to be working into wheel today. So from here, we're going to go ahead and bring those heels in, hug them nice and tight towards the sit bones, push the low back into the floor. We've got a lot of movement in that back now. What we're trying to do is, throughout our practice is creating that movement in the upper back so we've got a little bit more bend. That's where I really struggle myself personally. So from this position, um, those of you who are moving into wheel with us, uh, we're going to go ahead and place the hands just um, beyond the shoulder tips with the elbows up to the sky. Open the fingers nice and wide. Notice if your elbows fall out to the side, you're going to feel this in the pinky side of the wrist right away. So all you have to do is stay right here for a moment. I tend to get fidgety in my feet, so I'm going to just root down and ground, remind my body to relax. And then on the first breath, inhale up to the crown of the head. From there, I press into the hands, lift the heart forward towards my hands, and find that wheel pose. I can also come up onto the toes to extend the stretch just a little bit more. Taking a few deep breaths, squeeze the elbows in and back. I'm sorry, in and forward towards the wall you're facing. When you're ready to come down, elbows still stay tightly pulled in, chin tucks, and you roll right on down. From here, set the soles of the feet to the floor nice and wide on your mat. Take your arms out to cactus position. And we're going to just go ahead and windshield wiper those knees to the right and to the left. And then to the right again, pausing right here. Knees, the legs stay wide, feet stay wide. If you want, you can hook that right angle across that left side for an added bonus. I'm feeling pretty good right now, so I'm going to leave mine unbound. You're going to turn your head the opposite direction of the knees, so turn the head over the left shoulder. Now if that shoulder comes off the floor, press it back down. It means the knees can come up a little higher. From here, you're going to close your eyes. Starting to prepare for that space between sleep and wake. Wandering towards Shavasana. Notice how open that hip flexor is on that left side. As you inhale the next breath, bring it to center. Keep the legs wide. Go ahead and drop the knees over to the left. And to the right with the next breath. And to the left one more time. Pressing that ankle over the thigh if you want it. We're staying right here. Turn the head over the right shoulder. Close the eyes if you can. Relax the upper back into the floor.
From here, come back through center, drawing everything in. Then hug the knees towards the chest. Be sure to keep the knees a little wide here to allow the tailbone to still rest deeply into the mat. Notice how the lower back starts to fall heavily to the floor. Grab hold of those big toes again with those peace fingers. Moving through Happy Baby, extend the legs as long as is comfortable up towards the sky. Legs can be together or apart. They can still stay bent a little bit here too, depending on flexibility. And then when you're ready, take that Happy Baby where they bend slightly, shins and forearms are parallel, and just gently rock from side to side. Massaging the kidneys and everything along the spine that we worked today. Go ahead and bring the soles of the feet together. Reach up, grab hold of the outer edge of the feet, knees wide in Baddha Konasana. And as you take your next big breath, inhale, look forward, pull the heels away from you, create that traction, and gaze to the end of your mat. Release the feet down in Baddha Konasana or nice and long. Palms turn face up. You can shift the head from side to side to massage the skull if you like. Find the perfect place to rest the body for the next few moments. I invite you to stay in this position in Shavasana, that most precious pose, for as long as possible today. And when you're ready to come up, you're going to just roll onto that right side, pause for a moment, take some time to come up. Wherever you are in your practice, whether it's still reclined or upright, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time in your quarantine day to spend it with me on your mats. I hope that we all know that we get through this difficult time it helps us grow our practice. Much like Krishnamacharya Krishna said, thank God for the suffering because it's the unavoidable motive for practice. Thank you all so much for practicing this morning. I hope you enjoyed church today. Namaste.